Wake up, Jacob. Israelite Prepper here. Just want to share with the brothers a little bit. So sisters, if you leave the room just for a second, I just want to talk to the brothers real quick. Now, brothers, what I want to talk to you about are some red flags when seeking a second wife or subsequent wife. First and foremost, you have to have criteria. You have to have some sort of standard, okay? Obviously, we all want Yah-fearing women. And sometimes, if you don't go to like community uh, where they are, where a lot of them are, it's gonna be some slim pickings out there, right? So, I understand, I understand. However, you still have to have some criteria. Okay, they have to fit that criteria because when we start cutting corners, you don't know what you're bringing into your household. Okay, so I thought of a few red flags. There's a lot more red flags, okay, potential red flags out there. However, you want to at least have some baseline red flags because obviously we in Israel, we don't believe in the whole dating thing. You know, we may inquire and then we decide whether or not we're going to court. Okay, so I get that. We do courting, okay, because it's a serious affair. And with that, understand what the red flags are, okay? So, red flag number one. She asks for money early. She asks for money early. That's nuts. That's crazy. I, I, I know, but it happens. You can be dating someone, then all of a sudden, what happens? They start to complain about uh, how hard it is out there. I understand it can be hard um, Maybe they're 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 really really sick or whatever the case may be But they start asking for money right off the rip really early That can be a huge red flag So now they want you to come and rescue them or something now I get it when we take on a wife we are taking financial responsibility, but watch out Okay, you need to watch out because you could also be inheriting a whole lot of debt. Now, if that's what you want, by all means, go right ahead. However, just understand because it's a symptom of something that could be a lot worse. They're asking for a lot of money. They could be financially irresponsible. They could have a ton, a ton of debt, student loans, credit card debt, or whatever. They could have made a lot of bad decisions. So you might want to look into that first that could be a huge red flag next red flag everything that happened in the past is everyone else's fault except hers meaning she doesn't take any personal accountability okay and unfortunately you know they may have a pretty long history but come on everyone has some personal accountability if they are making themselves out to be the squeaky clean person no matter what then that's also a red flag, okay? There's gotta be a little bit of personal accountability. You know, hey, I made a mistake. I could have made a better decision. I, uh, I was too hasty. Maybe I was too headstrong. I could have handled things a little bit better. Something, give me something, okay? Give me something. Really, it's, it's you had no fault whatsoever in any relationship, the last one. What about the one before that? What about the one before that? and before that and none of it was your fault i don't know guys that could be a red flag okay <sighs> third red flag you might want to look at some cues here if she says things like she is just uh free-spirited assertive independent free thinker strong-willed um she could be telling you something i don't know you may want to at least look into it a little bit deeper ask how does she handle conflict and listen carefully the reason why is because you could be getting someone who is unsubmissive someone who won't assimilate and these things are very important brother okay it's not that you are going to be domineering and a dictator or anything like that it's just that you don't want to be challenged every step of the way you don't want to be challenged at what we're going to eat for breakfast or lunch or something you don't want to be challenged at every turn some things are just your decision and you don't want to talk about it you don't that's just it now obviously big decisions fine talk about it as a team or whatever but as the man you got to pull the trigger on it anyway but you just want to know if you're going to have someone who is going to be confrontational you don't want to bring a cancer into your home you don't 
want to ah, disturb the peace in your home. If you have peace in your home right now, then you don't wanna bring in someone who's gonna disturb that peace. If she is rebellious, you wanna look for signs of rebellion, okay? Be vigilant when looking for signs of rebellion and unsubmission. How can I say that? Someone who's just not very submissive, not willing to be submissive. Next red flag. If she's self-centered, if it's all about her, she's looking for you to make her feel like a princess and the world revolves around her and um, all attention should be focused to her. That's a huge red flag, okay? Because if you're a man of Yah, then obviously, or you should have some sort of vision, some sort of path that you are on, some kind, some sort of goal, right? So you don't need to bring someone in to distract you from that goal, from di to distract you from that vision. That's why Paul says in the New uh, Testament when he's saying, it's probably better to be single so you can focus on the things of the Most High because someone who is married, they focus on being married. So you don't want to, not only do you not want to bring someone who is rebellious in attitude, you don't want someone to be a distraction because you need to put all your time and attention on them because they are the pretty princess on the pedestal. Next red flag. You need to watch out to see if she is emotionally manipulative because that's one of their strongest weapons against us guys. They will start to tug at the heartstrings and they will use that to manipulate you. See, some women are very confrontational and in your face and they buck up to you and, 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 and you guys are just gonna go back and forth and you're just spitting each other's face in an argument. Others are a little more subtle, a little more docile, but they will um, tug at the heartstrings and use that against you to kind of get their way. Um, you hurt me or they will cry or they will be passive aggressive. This is our, these are forms of emotional manipulation, okay? We all have emotions, they all feel things, and you need to deal with your wife in an understanding way as the weaker vessel, right? But at the same time, you cannot let emotion rule your household. Watch out for those who will be emotionally manipulative. You have to find those things out for yourself. Pay attention in the early, early stages. Next red flag, she's inflexible. No, I don't mean physically. She's just inflexible in anything that you want to do. Inflexible in your ideas, inflexible in your thoughts, inflexible to what you would like. Inflexible. See, as the head, you have to lead. And it's really hard for you to lead if you always has op if you always have opposition and the opposition is coming from someone in your home fellas if you have a wife a current wife and she is assimilated to you and she is submissive to you and she is flexible don't bring someone who is inflexible don't bring your polar opposite or i should say your wife's your current wife's polar opposites in the sense that if your wife has a great quality about her that you absolutely like, you love it about her, don't bring the polar opposite in the front door. You have a submissive wife, don't bring a rebellious wife. You have a flexible wife now, don't bring an inflexible wife. Now, if you have a wife that have all these bad qualities, you fix that first before you bring anybody in. You fix that first. But if the potential is inflexible you're gonna have a hard uphill battle don't do it it's not worth it last but not least the last and seventh red flag she doesn't like family i know i know listen to the answers when you talk to her you ask questions you ask family oriented questions how are you with your mom how are you with your dad do you have any kids? How's that going? What kind of parent are you? Are you interested in more kids? You know, it doesn't matter. Even if they can't have more kids or not, uh, or their past child rearing or anything like that, you gotta see if they actually like kids. Cause you might have other kids. You might have little kids now and she could 
be involved with that? Is she gonna sit back on the sidelines and let you and your current wife kind of deal with the kids and she'll be like, well, hey, they're not my kids, so I don't want... If she doesn't like family, polygyny is not for her, okay? So don't bring her in the front door. Don't do it. Guys, listen. Don't try to get a second wife or subsequent wife out of desperation. Don't be desperate. Be a man, be a leader. Don't be desperate. Be patient enough to look for red flags. And by the most high in heaven, ask questions. Be upfront with your intentions and ask questions and listen for the answers. Listen. So anyway, guys, I really, really want to help out the brethren up there because you know what? <sighs> the quality of the journey in your life could be largely dependent on the help me you choose for yourself. So it is incumbent for you and I to choose wisely. Do your very, very best to choose wisely. I've seen families from afar that seem to be flourishing because they have the right mates. Their mates are assimilated. They're all going into the same direction. It is a weld oil machine and it is working because they're all on the same page and they're all assimilated. They're all going after the same goal. And then there are disasters out there. You wanna know why? Because there's no cooperation. There's no assimilation. There's no leadership. There's no submission. It is all in disarray. Some guys out there get so desperate because they just want another wife that they'll take any warm body coming through the door. Do that to your own peril because if you bring a wicked woman into your life, it's your fault because a wicked woman is made and laid up for a wicked man. But that's not you. So be discerning, be patient, and watch out for the red flags. This is like Prepper. Shalom. See you in the next video.